Hey everybody, Scott here for the Helix channel. It's Wednesday and today's second video. Huh. More recording with GarageBand. Today, bass. We're gonna move around some stuff. We're gonna do some cutting and pasting and a uh, bit of a drum break. Crazy. Shall we? Here we are at the computer again. I have added a bass track, and now to add a track uh, to GarageBand, what the fuck is this? Updates, remind me it's next year. Okay, uh, to add a track, just go up to track, new track. Now, it'll give you some options. I always wanna use recording a microphone, and that means using the Helix. I don't ever connect to use the, uh, the GarageBand amps or the GarageBand keyboard stuff. I always go like this, blah, blah, blah. But this particular one, uh, I've already actually done it, so I don't need to add it. What I did is I went and hit new track with duplicate settings. And that's the same as all the other tracks. Then I moved it up here, and that's the bass. Now I'm gonna solo the bass, and uh, here's what I ended up with, or here's what I made. It just goes like that until we get to the uh, the change. I guess you call it the bridge section, which is this bit uh, right here. And if we uh, listen to everything. <laughs> Drum break. I'm actually gonna leave the drum break in there. I normally would not do that. But it's a pretty funky beat and Benny's on fire today. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste some guitar parts and some bass parts because I've already recorded them. They already sound good. And this is something that uh, Joe Satriani taught me. I was recording up in Sausalito at the, the plant where Satriani made a bunch of his records from the late 80s on. Maybe even the mid 80s. He might have done Surfing with the Alien there. I'm not sure. But, um, sorry, I hit the mic stand or the uh, tripod. Uh, we had his guitar engineer in there. And one of the things he, we also had his drummer in there. He tuned our drums. That was kind of fun. Jeff Capitelli. But, uh, one of the things that uh, the engineer told me is that Satriani loved to copy and paste guitar parts. If he recorded something that he really, really liked and it felt really great, why not fly it to another part of the song if it didn't really matter, especially if it's a rhythm part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the, uh, the bass. So to copy and paste a bass part, and I did that all the way through, just uh, Command C, highlight that particular track, Command C, and go to where you want it to go. Want it to live? I want it to live right here. Now I'm gonna have to do some adjusting for sure. Then bam, C Command V. Now we're gonna have to uh, check its. Yeah, see it uh, doesn't exactly line up, but we'll just move it. Erp. See how it lines up. <laughs> A little bit shy so what we're gonna do is expand and go back to the uh, the first time see it's a little bit shy of the uh, there we go and bring it back down size 
and hear what we get. Yeah, a little bit ahead of the beat in some spots, so let's expand it again. Move it a hair to the right. And then give her a listen. As long as the downbeats are good, we're good. And they seem good. So now we're going to do the same thing with uh, some guitars. Because why not? And we have this particular guitar, which is the main riff. We'll do that one. Command C. Blah, blah, blah. Come on over here. Hit that spot. Command V. I'm just going to line it up again, just like the other one. This one did all of the, uh, as long as I highlighted the entire track and not just one of the, uh, one of the sections like this, highlighting the track from the left hand side highlights all the bits. So I get it all the way up until uh, the breakdown. And that's going to be the out for this one. So we're just going to run it until that point, and then it's going to be the end of the song. So we'll just go back over here, do our little quick lineup. Oh, why are you not moving? Okay, butthole, what's your deal? Oh, I see. I have to I have to move them individually. I can't move them as a group because they have not been pasted or uh, sewn up. I don't ever sew them up. <laughs> So now we just need to line up the uh, these other bits. Gotta have uh, hit them individually, and those will line up. It's a little bit behind the beat, so because I started a little early, let's expand. Make sure that this one's the only one highlighted, and push it forward a little bit. So you know. This is just a fun thing to do. Still behind the beat a little bit. I don't want to be that behind the beat. I don't want to be that uh, that funky. There we go. And. I'll do some fine tuning to it in my own time. But that's basically the process. I'm going to cut and paste all the rest of the pieces, move them over until they all line up. And then uh, tomorrow, we're going to do overdub guitar parts, uh, maybe another rhythm track, and then uh, some lead bits. So come on back for that. I don't know if there's anything else I can show you uh, about the bass, except for, you know, the way I tweak the, uh, the EQ. Now what I do for the bass, when it's by itself, you can hear it. You can hear the pick pretty loud. I use a, uh, a pick when I play the bass. I call me whatever you like. I don't give a shit. I like the sound of the, of the pick and I pick it right over the pickup too. I just, that's my thing. But then I don't leave the clickiness in there. What I'll do, turn on the EQ here, pull down some mids and some highs, give it a little ambience and a tiny hair of reverb, believe it or not. And then pushing up the low end uh, just a, a wee bit and then we get this. As opposed to this. Which is, you know less clicky and when you play it along with the drums the clickiness goes away it blends with the drums because the drums are you know something there's always something clicky happening with the drums that masks the clickiness of the bass it's still there uh, but I've you know I've reduced it with the EQ and then blending it in with the drums it's all good. 
there you go, everybody. More garage band fun. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to lay down uh, the final bits of rhythm guitar and some lead action, figure out what to do over the top of this mess. And then uh, Friday, we'll mix it. Which means, for me, the mixing process includes cleaning up the tracks, uh, adding any kind of post effects, you know, writing the, uh, the volume levels of the individual tracks, making sure everything's in a good spot uh, spatially, you know, panned left, right, whatever, and then, uh, you know, then the uh, overall levels. Good stuff. So, I will see you uh, tomorrow with some, some of that. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. And hopefully uh, the new amp will show up tomorrow. It was potentially going to be here tomorrow. Mo it'll be here definitely Friday morning, but hopefully tomorrow. I'll see you then.